Hello, fellow dissidents. The Arizona Regulator is a nifty little drop-in forced reset trigger. YouTube will not allow me to show you where to put it, so I have to blur the spicy bits, but it is literally as simple as just placing it in its comfy little spot inside the upper receiver. I brought three ARs with me, and when I dry-fired each of them at home, they all produced strong forward pressure on the trigger as I pulled the charging handle, yet at the range I was feeling little or no pressure on two out of the three guns I brought with me. One worked just normally with no forced reset, and the other had a dead trigger. Thankfully, it worked just fine in the one I came here to test, so let's find out what happens when you try to put an Arizona regulator together with a Franklin Armory BFS-2. Can I put a forced reset trigger on top of a binary trigger? Regulators! Mount up. I hit something. <laughs> I hit something. Oh, don't mind if I do. Oh. Well, thank you, sir. That that works pretty darn good. All right. I guess uh, load up some more mags and see what this does when I flip it around to that way. Normally, you can't do this because you can't put a forced reset trigger fire control group in the same gun as a binary trigger fire control group because they're both the, the same kind of part. They would replace each other, but because this is the drop-in flappy thing on the top part, and this is the fire control group, we actually can do both at the same time. And if you know much about how these things work, like, mechanically, I think you know how this is going to turn out. You sure about that? But we're, we're going to see if this goes extra super duper fast. Got in there. Still went fast, but I don't think that was twice as fast. That was that was pretty much just as regular fast, right? I did not expect that to work. <laughs> I thought it would just stop working, honestly. Yeah. I thought it was just gonna like. N I wonder if I broke my binary trigger just well, now. We're gonna f we're gonna have to find out if it's still binary. They did give it to me for free. Full disclosure. I think I have to say the name in full every time you talk to it. Yeah. Right. Um, actually, everything on this gun was free. <laughs> like, everything on it. Okay, that works. Now we're going to go to binary. That works. So we learned that adding a forced reset trigger to a binary ends up just working normally as a forced reset trigger, and I didn't break my binary. But before we called it a day, we decided to see what differences in recoil we could find with my friend Robert's setup. He got one of those Maxim roller delayed buffers, which is supposed to cut recoil. We compared it to a CAC K-Spec enhanced recoil system and a basic bitch H buffer to find out if the Teutonic roller delay magic can convert an AR9 into an MP5, but with good ergos. Hey Robert, so what's in this, uh, this little nine milli thing right now. We've got a maximum roller delay buffer and a super safety. Oh, sweet, okay. So let's see a little burst from it, please. <laughs> I thought I was out of the brass rainbow and I was <laughs> not. <laughs> that was gorgeous, awesome. It's got a special tool because we've got a flat spring it makes it a pain in the butt to get over the retaining pin. So it's got a tool to press it down so you can drop it in. Okay, so well, we're not different. modifying the gun in any way here. We are installing a different recoil system, right? This is the KAK 
K-Spec PCC buffer for okay. nine mil. There it goes. You don't have to dump the whole mag it's every just, time. It's just more fun that way. <laughs> I think it works better. And now we swapped out, well, a standard H buffer. With the PCC buffer they were running? Yeah, so so now we get to compare the, what was the first one with the roller thingy? The maximum roller delay. Right, we got the maximum roller delay, which is part of the recoil system. Then we've got the CAC, which is just pretty much just extra springs. And it comes springs with a flat within wire springs. Spring. <laughs> and then we've got the um, bog standard H yeah, buffer. H buffer, nothing fancy about it. We're going to do a quick burst and then we'll do it in slow mo. All right, Robert, so if you will, can you walk me through subjectively what the difference was in felt recoil with the Maxim versus the CAC versus the H buffer? Yeah, that was basically like a scale, you know, the, the Maxim, the top end, you know, real soft, real easy. And then the H one was real hard, normal blowback. The KAK one was right about in the middle and uh, they all do what they say they're going to do. It's pretty cool. <laughs> all right. So as advertised. Yeah. Um, so are you, you have gone through quite a few iterations on this little nine milli guy. I just want the right? super safe to run. <laughs> I gotcha. But of these, of the parts you've tested so far, what are you keeping? I do like the Maxim. It's softer and keeps me on target down there. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. Love you, bro. Thank you. Uh, Robert here has been a friend of mine for a really long time. I don't know if you can still see me. I, I see it. But, all right. But thank you for hanging out with me. Uh, we go shooting Love a lot you. together, but I don't think you've been in a couple of videos here and there. And Back hopefully the we'll truck. do this more often if you're okay with it. Heck yeah. Tell the people you love them. I love you. Bye.